Good day, Lormanians. Welcome to episode two of The Breathing Room. Today, we will talk about immediate access to God. In our world today, many people wish to have direct and immediate access to help and assistance. That is why people are rushing to get in the line to reach the source of help ahead of everyone else. Almost everyone wants to be in the line ahead of everyone else to be able to get to the source of help. Now a child of God has a direct access to Him, immediate access to Him. And God is wanting to see that truth embedded in our hearts. He wants us to build that confidence in us that whenever we would come to Him, He is ready to listen to us and would lovingly receive our petitions. We all love this word, confidence. That is a beautiful word. It gives the very picture of strength. It gives us the picture of certainty and steadiness. We want to have that sense of confidence in our life, for sure. You all want that. You, you, you want to be that kind of person. You want to be a very confident person. And, uh, you know, having that full sense of confidence can be learned. And we need to truly dig deep into the scriptures so that we might be able to understand what it means to have that full sense of confidence. We need to have that strength. We need to have that steadiness in the midst of troubles, steadiness in the midst of sickness, in the midst of sufferings. Even any time we have struggles, we need to be steady. We need to be strong. We need to be confident. Now, the Bible talks about confidence that is firmly established in God. Now, let me read the passage in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. And may I encourage uh, each of you to listen very carefully to the Word of God. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. May the Lord bless His Word into our hearts. This passage in Hebrews is among the most quoted scripture verses in the Bible. It is also one of the clearest picture of the believer's connection with God. You see, everyone who turns to God for his or her salvation establishes a connection with the Creator Himself. So the moment a person trusts God for his life, for his existence, for his salvation, for his destiny, for his destiny begins a connection, a living relationship with God. This is a wonderful biblical truth that Jesus is the one who stands in between. We have a connection with the Father through the Son of God who is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's kind of wonderful biblical truth. Jesus is the one who stands in between man and God. He is the great high priest according to this passage, according to the book of Hebrews. Now, Jesus is the one and only qualified to be our mediator because He is the Son of God. He has experienced all our struggles. He has experienced all the temptations that we all have in this world and in this life. He experienced sufferings and yet the Bible tells us he did not succumb to sin. He did not sin. Meaning to say, he was ten tempted and tried and he suffered on all angles of his life, on all areas and sides of his life. 
and yet he did not succumb to sin. Meaning to say, he maintained his righteousness. That is according to this passage in the book of Hebrews. For this reason, we can look to him as our perfect example. We can rely on him as our perfect substitute. We can come to him as our only high priest. In fact, the truth is, the Bible tells us he is the great high priest and we can trust in him as our source of help, the only source of help, the only source of healing. Now, we can be confident knowing Jesus sympathizes with our temptations and sufferings. You've got your weaknesses. I have my weakness. All of us are fragile, breakable. We have weaknesses. And there's Jesus Christ. He alone is able to sympathize with our weakness. You know the reason why? Because He came to live as human, as a man. And He walked through this earth for more or less 30 years. And He spent His life with humans. He dwelt among men. And He uh, know very well how and what it means to live with sinners that surrounded him and that made him the only qualified to become our mediator. He himself, he made it possible for us. Uh, he opened an access to the Father. He made that possible because of his sacrifice, the sacrifice of his life to die on the cross. Jesus made it perfect for us. It is a finished work, and He cannot take it back. He cannot undo the truth. We cannot undo the truth. The truth has been recorded in the Bible. He sacrificed Himself, and with that, He opened an access to the Father. The Bible tells us only He has the prerogative and the right to become our mediator. It is a finished work already. And so uh, our task, our part is to trust what he has already accomplished and entrust our worries to him. What worries do you have in your life? What are your needs? The fact that he sent or the Father sent Jesus to die on our behalf is the confidence that you need to approach his throne of grace and expect to receive the help that you need today. My dear Lormanians, what is your need today? Perhaps you need wisdom. God is the source of wisdom. Jesus says, Jesus is inviting us to come to him and say, uh, Lord Jesus, please bring my case to the Father. Because that is his task, that is his work. Uh, in the entire Bible, we are told that the Messiah aims to bring our case to the Father. The Bible tells us he who believes in him uh, has gotten an access to the Father because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That truth has been recorded on the very pages of this scripture. And that truth remains until now up to this time. Perhaps you need wisdom. The book of James tells us he is rich in wisdom and he will not falter. He will not waver. He gives wisdom generously to those who ask of him. Uh, are you sick and you need healing? The Gospels tell us that Jesus is our healer. What about emotional strength? Jesus understands our weaknesses. Jesus knows how we feel and what we feel. Jesus sees what we think. Jesus knows our plans and our, the things that we plot in our hearts. He says, you need me. And we have to agree with him and we'll say to him, yes, Lord, I need you. Do you need him to guide you to make the right decision in your life? Young people, students, adults, faculty and staff, at Lorma Colleges, uh, we make decisions every day. We make hundreds of plans and decisions and choices every day. 
Now, we all want to make the brightest and the right decision for our lives. We may come to the Father through Jesus Christ, His Son, and say, Lord, I need you to direct me, to guide me in my decision making. May I encourage you to turn to God and put all your worries and prayers into this hand. The assurance is this, even when we, all of us, even when we put all our weights on Him, we will never tire our God. Even when we put all our longings, our prayers to Him, we will never break His promises. What He has promised is here, and they are binding. Jesus remembers what He has promised, and He says, I'm going to fulfill them for as long as you come to me, because I am inviting you to come to me, you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. That's a promise, and God is going to fulfill what he has said, and we take him at his word. May I invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you. We have an access, a direct and immediate access to you. Who is the source of mercy? You are the source of grace. You are the source of help and assistance. You want us to have that confidence in our hearts in approaching you. And with that in your, in your mind and in your plan, you have sent your son. You have sacrificed your only son so that those who believe in him will have a direct access to you. We have become your children by virtue of our faith on Jesus Christ and what he has done on the cross. And that is our confidence. Our confidence lies on the truth that you care for us, that you died for us, that you love us. Lord, we thank you that we can receive your help once we turn to you. And it is our prayer that you will uh, incline your ear and reach out to those ones who would uh, come to you and acknowledge you as God, as Lord, as Savior, as Master of their lives. Thank you for your uh, presence in each of our life. Uh, I'm praying for all the students, all the faculty and staff, all the Lormanians, even those Lormanians who are not with us in the country and in these campuses. We trust that you'll uh, visit them wherever they are. We pray for healing for those who are sick. And we trust that you'll strengthen and bring to health, bring them to health, perfect health, O oh God. And grant wisdom to those who ask you. Grant uh, guidance in your leading to those who are making decisions for their personal life, uh, their families, work-related decisions. And it is our prayer that you be honored, O oh God, and be pleased with our life. Help us to live a life that is pleasing before you. We would like to give you uh, everything we put, all these matters, into your hands because you are overall, you are powerful, you are our sovereign God. And to you alone, we give praise, we give thanksgiving, we honor you, and we worship you. This is our prayer in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen.